Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today I'm going to do a cook along with Blind Mike video. So as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff out here. I'm going to make dessert and dinner at the same time, but we're going to start with the dessert. So we're going to make a s'mores cake in the Instapot. Um, I'll go over the ingredients for that first. And then we will go over what we're making for supper as well. Um, I'm going to try to do all this in one clip. This is going to be real time, except for a few parts that I will splice together. So here we have one cup of flour, one cup of graham cracker crumbs, one fourth of a teaspoon of salt and baking soda. That's going to be our dry ingredients for our dough. Our wet ingredients will be in here. It will start here. One In here we have one egg. We have one tablespoon of pure maple syrup and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. You can't really tell, but in here we have one fourth cup of white sugar, one half cup of brown sugar. We have one, somewhere here, one stick of butter. We also have a bowl for mixing the dry ingredients, a fork for mixing up, whipping the dry ingredients, a 7.3 inch spring pan, a couple of pieces of parchment paper, and some butter here for our um, greasing in our pans. So tonight we're going to make what I call Dr. Up Craft Dinner, Blind Mike style. We have a box of Craft Dinner with its seasoning packet. We have some click, or in the States it's called Spam. We have some Rotel tomatoes drained. We have some shredded cheddar cheese, I believe. We have a mixed cup of peas and corn, about one cup of corn, one cup of peas. We have some Worcestershire sauce. We have a jar of cheese whiz. And we also have a thing of mayo. Um, and somewhere, oh, I didn't get them out yet. And of course our Instapot is the tools for making them along with our two cup for two cups of water. And we also over here have some spices. I will kind of go through them with you as I put them away. We have two tablespoons of this cheese powder that we found on Amazon. It's like a popcorn cheese powder. By the way, they're on this little dish. And everything else is a third of a tablespoon, or a third of a teaspoon, I'm sorry. A third of a teaspoon red pepper flakes. A third of a table teaspoon of Cajun. Some, a third of a teaspoon of chili powder. A third of a teaspoon of cumin. A third of a teaspoon of garlic, or yeah, I think that's garlic. A third of a teaspoon of onion and a third of a teaspoon of this Frank's Red Hot sauce powder. Um, this stuff is delicious. So we got all that in this little container here. We'll put just right over here until we're ready to start the meal. Um, I did forget to get out the tin foil, which I'll get. So, and we also have our water that I'm going to go ahead and turn on. Actually, I'm not gonna turn that on yet. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the dry ingredients for our s'mores cake. Oh yeah, and Hershey's bars and that, but we'll get to all that. So let's start to get stuff going. So we're adding in this cup of flour here, just kind of tap it on the side is what I do. I always have one side of the sink for all the dishes that I accumulate. So we're gonna add this of salt and baking soda. Again, that was a fourth of a teaspoon. We're gonna take our fork. Oh wait, we forgot our one cup of graham cracker crumbs. We're also gonna add that into that bowl. So I put that down. Um, I'm doing this video this way. Um, just to try a different style. Everybody's got their different ways of cooking. And I thought it'd be interesting just to see how a blind person cooks. Um, the reason that I have everything prepped and I didn't measure here is I thought it would make the video a little too long. So actually, now that we have this going, I am gonna go ahead and turn on the water because I'm not gonna keep you guys on the video the whole 40 minutes that this uh, that the cake is in the Instapot. I will put a clip in at the end of what it looks like when it's out of the Instapot and cooling. Um, so what you want to do is just basically whip all this together. 
we're gonna make this into a dough. So next, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna keep this fork in here for now so I know where it's at. Always rinse your hands in between or wash your hands. First rule of culinary school. But anyway, I prepped all this stuff ahead of time so we didn't have to uh, work as, we didn't have to work as hard on this. So I've got some softened butter here. I'm gonna put it in our KitchenAid mixer. Um, quite honestly, if you have a KitchenAid, it's the easiest way to do this, to make the dough. You can do this by hand. Quite honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. So there we go. We've got the stick of butter in there. We're just gonna throw this out and try to keep a clean kitchen if possible. And we're gonna start with our sugars. Our white, half a cup of brown, fourth a cup of white. We're gonna dump in here as well. I should have taken the bowl off, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take out, put the paddle on. And we're gonna cream the butter and sugars together. So this will take a few minutes. Um, I know people don't probably wanna see this. My butter isn't as soft as it could be. So we're just gonna let it go for a little bit and break up all the lumps. I'm actually gonna speed it up some. I'm just holding it here so it doesn't knock off my counter. So I'm at about a four on this. I wouldn't go any higher than a four. We're just gonna stop it here and check it. Okay, we've creamed our butter and our sugar together nicely. I'm just gonna get a spoon or a rubber spatula, a wooden spoon, I guess, will work the best. And I'm just gonna knock this down the sides before I add the other stuff. So now I'm gonna add Butter and sugar is always good mixed together, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and add the egg and vanilla mixture. We'll add that and we'll add that. We'll go ahead and turn this on again. It'll take a little bit for that egg to break apart. Um, some mixers are faster than this one. This one I find if you don't want to mess it up, do it on a lower speed. You can see it all hasn't gotten together yet. So we're just scraping down the sides of the bowl before we mix it a little more and add the dry ingredients. All right, I think that's pretty good. So what we're gonna do is bring this down we're gonna add our dry ingredients here. We're gonna dump this in. Everything is nicely mixed together in here. Let's make sure we get everything out of the bowl, like so. Gonna, oh, did it again. Sometimes I forget to lift it back up. There we go, start it on low so the flour doesn't spit out. and about 15 seconds to get everything combined. Let's see. I think that's pretty good. We're just gonna use our fingers and push it down off the paddle here. So that's good. I am happy with this dough, the texture of this dough. It seems to be all mixed together. We'll go ahead and take the paddle off. Just use your fingers and work it off the paddle. 
There we go. So, what we want to do before we put the dough in the pan is we want to just take our hands with our butter here and we want to butter this all over. We don't want to leave any spots unbuttered just because we don't want it to stick. So we will do the sides and the bottom. We've already done the bottom. This ca this will stick because of the chocolate. So don't be afraid of using too much butter, to be honest. Um, you can never have enough butter on a pan when you're doing something like this. These are desserts I usually don't have a lot of luck with because of that. Um, also make sure you get the little ring down here. You don't want anything to stick to the opening of the pan. Again, this is a live cook with me. You get to see how I do this stuff live instead of me doing it off camera. So now we've done that. We're gonna place, I didn't cut them evenly, so we're gonna place our parchment paper in here. Um, it is gonna go partially up the side because of the way I cut it, but that's okay. I used two so I could cover the whole pan. So right now I don't need this butter. The next time I'm gonna need it is for the macaroni and since I'm done with that counter, I'm gonna go ahead and set some of the stuff over here that I need for our macaroni. The water's on, okay. So we want our dough over here. And we'll take our dough from here. We're not gonna take all of it because we need some of it for other things. So what we're gonna do is we want it kind of thick. So we're gonna start with a little bit here and just push it down here to make a crust. We want the crust kind of thick, so we're not gonna be too stingy here, but we wanna make a nice crust here, like so. Push it down so it all fits nicely. We wanna make sure we leave some for the sides and some for the top. That's why I'm putting it together as I go. So then I can do both. Sometimes when I make dough, for whatever reason, even when I measure it, it doesn't always end up being enough or I'm using too much in the wrong place. So dough is still kind of something I'm working on. I am no way a professional cook. So um, this is just me showing you what I like to make and how I make it. So just remember, you know, be gentle in the comments, guys. So we want to take some more of this. And we just want to work it along the sides here. You don't need a thick layer on your sides, just a thin layer. So spread it out as much as you can. Because remember, like I said, we still want some for the top. We still want some for the top. And I sometimes grab whatever might be loose on the bottom down here. I scrape it up into this. So we get it all. We're gonna, there again, make it as thin as possible. We don't want it to go all the way to the top. So as you can see, the more I add to this, the easier I can spread it around the sides. And to be honest and fair, we're not going for perfection. As long as we have some to put a thin layer across the top, um, we will be all good. Um, cooking has been something, um, a lot of people have kind of asked how I got into cooking, why I like it so much. Um, cooking something I kind of got into as a kid. I've always enjoyed cooking. Um, it's a good outlet for stress relief and, you know, all that stuff. Um, I was never really a baker until I met my wife, and she kind of really got me into baking. Um, I really like doing the baking now that I've had some exposure in a baking class at the cooking school. Um, it was a really nice experience. Um, I've learned to make a lot in those places. I learned how to make, not a lot, but I got my confidence in that kitchen. 
working with people who had worked in kitchens. It's a, it's a good experience. So we got our pan here now, all doughed up. We're gonna just rinse off our hands again. Um, I actually need to grab one more spoon here. Or maybe even a knife. Maybe both. Then I don't have to run back and forth. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take one of these Hershey bars. And I actually have extra in the cupboard if I need them. So this um, I got from a channel called Pressure Luck Cooking. He makes a lot of really good stuff. I've used quite a bit of his stuff and the six sister stuff. Um, I, like, I like watching a lot of cooking on YouTube. Um, I find that a lot of these non professional or just YouTubers aren't like the, uh, they're not like the, uh, a lot of the other YouTubers. They're more, or a lot of the professional cooks from like the cooking channel, they're a lot more down to earth, is my opinion. So, I think it's a good thing to watch them and let, and listen to what they have to say. They've got some really good guidance um a lot of these people on youtube i find as a blind person are a lot more descriptive um and they tend to use ingredients that we already have a lot of these other places don't really use the ingredients that we have and then we're kind of left out um saying well we can't buy that why would we want to buy that well that's just how those places operate. Um, it is neat to see some of these fancy things that they cook. Most of the time I don't really care, to be honest. Um, we want to fill this whole thing up with chocolate bars, because remember, it's going to be like a s'more. There will be some cracks in it, but I got actually extra Hershey bars, which is good. I couldn't find the XL size, so I'm just going with what I could find in my store. Which for these, it's bonfire season up here in the north, so everybody's out having s'mores and good campfire food. Um, tell me in the comments, do you like a good campfire? Or do you just like something like this s'mores cake? It's okay if you don't like a campfire. I do. I love to cook on fire. I'm hoping to get up there and do some cooking on the fire for you guys on YouTube. Um, I think it's important to remember where you started cooking from. I think that's very important. And guess what? We got the whole thing covered and we got one little extra piece. Try I get the snack on. So next we're going to marshmallow fluff this up. Now, knife doesn't work. Spoon will. So it calls for a seven ounce jar. I actually have another one because I've used some out of here, so if I need to, I will grab it. The top will probably have a little bit of marshmallow poking out, but that's okay. It's a s'more. We're not going for perfection, right? So the trick is... Um, get your hand kind of wet to do this and you won't have any problems my goal right now is just to get this all spread out when this starts to melt together it will also spread out some more it'll be very marshmallowy um, next time I would keep a little bit of water since it's just me and my wife and my hands are clean ish 
I'm just using my fingers to wet my, or my mouth to wet my hands down. Um, if I was working in a restaurant, of course I would keep a little dipping bowl of water around and do it that way, but since I'm just at home and I'm just a little free cook here, enjoying what I love, loving what I do, All right, we're almost done with the marshmallow fluff. Remember, it's supposed to be a s'more, so it's gonna be gooey, messy, yummy. Um, once I get the noodles boiling is probably where I'm gonna pause the video here, just because these are gonna be very long clips and I'm gonna already have to edit this on my computer more than likely or send it to my computer I'm just trying to make sure I get enough enough fluff to spread it all out we're Almost spread out. Might as well clean out this marshmallow tub if we can. I've got another one. I have a feeling this is going to be a cake. My wife and I will be making quite often. This is my first time making this. Um, so. Good idea, actually. Use as much out of this as you can. We're just trying to get it all filled in. All the little cracks in the side. I want this to love the crust, as I call it. So... As a blind person, I do cook a lot with my hands. Um, feel is very important to me. Um, I don't, when I cook for others, I um, don't cook like this using my mouth as a wedding agent. I won't lie, when I'm at home, I cheat. Um, I do wash my hands quite frequently, as you can tell in this video. I won't touch anything else af before I do, before I wash my hands, because I do keep a very sanitary kitchen. It's something that you learn from an early age growing up around people who cook, like to cook, do it for a living. Just kind of Beasing this out some. Okay, so this side's a little thin. Take a little more out of here. A little more. There we go. All right. So now. Mm -hmm. I'm just washing my hands again. So, since it's a s'more, what we need to do is we need to take this here. We need to take this Hershey bar and break it up. And it needs to go all around the top as well. Remember, this is a s'more. You want people to want, you want people to think they're at a campfire. Think they're at a campfire. Let them think of a nice warm summer's eve. It 
So since I didn't get the XXL Hershey bars, I had to use four of these. Me buying four was definitely a good idea. I will say that. So we got one more to break up here and put on the top. Oops, that one broke some, eh? It's okay. They're still usable pieces. There's always a use. Perfect, actually. So I don't want to push them down in there too far. I kind of just want them to sit on the top. But I did push them a little far. It's okay if it condenses together. Um, it doesn't really hurt if you've got a little marshmallow sticking out the top. It's a s'more. It's supposed to be a little messy, man. Just remember that. Remember, a s'more is supposed to be a bit messy. S'more is just supposed to be good. Perfect. Now, now we're just gonna scrape up the rest of this dough here. We're just going to stretch this across the top here. That ain't going to be perfect. My top crusts are never perfect. Yeah, some of it's gonna stick out. That's okay. So we're gonna wash our hands again. And the one thing I forgot to set out is I'm usually always forgetting something. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this burner up some. We're gonna grab a sheet of foil here. Don't need a big one, it's not a big fan. So we've got our sheet of foil. Rinse my hand again. So, what I'm going to do now is I got this wrapped up in tin foil. I got my little X thing in here that holds it. So 
So now I'm adding two cups. And actually because I lost some, I'm adding a little more. I'm gonna put this in here. This is, instead of having to use the trivet, this is just a X thing that holds your pots. Put the lid on. Ah, I forgot to plug it in. Okay, so we'll take the lid off, put the lid on, close the lid, set it to seal. Figure out where I put my condenser here. Oops. There it is. So we'll put the condenser on. We'll put the condenser on. We'll come down here. Sorry about my hand, guys. We'll push pressure cook set it for 40 minutes it's on high so I'm gonna pause and actually I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt before I do anything else I've got a spoon over here so give me a second I'm gonna pause this and come right back so I'm back, this is ready. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt to our water. I'm gonna grab our box of Kraft Dinner. I'm gonna go ahead and add that, get it going. You're gonna say, Mike, that's a lot of water, but I'm adding veggies as well. So I will set this for eight minutes exactly. I'm also, while this is going on, I'm gonna add our veggies that have been partially thawing here to get them cooked all the way. So those are all in the pot as well. We'll go ahead and stir and this will cook for eight minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to take a break as I deserve it. You'll still be cooking live, but I will come back actually when I get ready to strain it. We're back. As you can see, the timer's going off. As you can see, the timer's going off. We're just going to give it another good mix fast. Make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom. We're going to pick it up. Take it over to the sink here and dump it in this big strainer as fast as we can. Um, some people say this is dangerous, some people say I'm crazy, but I check the bottom with my fingers fast. I put it over here off the hot heat, just so we can get a start. I'm gonna shake this very heartily. I want as much of the water out as possible. So just shake it. left and right, shake it around some more until you don't hear a drip. I get as much of the water out as possible. I do not wash the starches off at all. Then I'll come back to the pan and I will dump it in here kind of slowly and then towards the end I'll get my fingers in the hot strainer here. And yes, she is hot. And I will use my fingers and I will scoop all of this off the strainer into the bowl, just turning it, turning it a little bit um, like that. And like that, and like that. Make sure it's all out. This is actually still on, so we're going to turn it off. We'll put this back in there. We'll go ahead. Before we start anything else, we've got our spoon. Yeah, we got our spoon that we used to stir that we're going to continue to use. 
We're gonna take a big glob of butter here. We're gonna take a big glob of butter and break a little piece off. Just not too big, but like that. We're gonna toss that in there. Before we do anything else, let's put our lid back on our butter just to make our legs easier. And rinse our hands fast again, just so they're not all buttery. Getting everything dirty. We will go ahead and actually put this back on the heat here. We will be turning the heat back on shortly. But first we're gonna add everything into this, but I wanna get the butter melted as best I can. Get this all coated with butter. You can already hear it starting to sizzle with nothing on it. So, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons, a table, one of these spoonfuls or two of mayo. This goes pretty fast, so I'm not adding the meat yet because, actually, because I wanna get the sauce set up first. But I added a few spoonfuls of that mayo as well. So I will grab my spoon here again. And this is actually still kind of hot. I wanna get that mixed in before I mix in anything else. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my, my meat. I'm not gonna add all of this meat. I don't think we need it all. I will find something else to do with it. Let's try that. That's about half. Let's go ahead and mix that in there. So we've added the click already. About half of that. I have, Again, I haven't turned it on yet just because I don't have everything in here and I don't want it to stick. So I'm also going to go ahead and add our tomatoes at this point just so we can get it combined nicely. This pot's going to be kind of full if you don't if you use a pot this size I'm not even sure what size this pot is but I want everything e equally mixed so I will go ahead and add the tomatoes as you can see the sizzling stopped we've already added the mayo So we're going to go ahead and turn this on low, a little past low I guess. So we've added the mayo, now we'll add a couple of these spoonfuls of Cheese Whiz. One of those and two of those and again. We will mix everything together here. I always mix after adding all my ingredients because I want everything to get incorporated in here. That is very important when making this that everything gets incorporated. So we've added our cheese whiz now and gotten that all mixed in. You're saying, Mike, where's all this stuff going? Where's all your flavor? We're adding this thing of cheddar cheese as well. So we will go ahead and incorporate our cheddar cheese. This is my version of doctored up mac and cheese. Yes, it takes a little more work than regular mac and cheese, but it's worth it, trust me. Take the time and make this, it's worth it. So now, we're gonna add a few drops of Worcestershire. You don't need a lot, because it's strong. 
Remember, we're still working on seasoning this. We haven't even turned the heat up all the way yet because we want the cheddar cheese to melt nicely in here with the tomatoes and the veggies. So we'll add our spice mixture next. The spice mixture smells really good. I think it's gonna give it a good flavor, to be honest. I think this might actually be the best craft dinner I've made yet. We'll hope anyways. It's supposed to have a spicy flavor, to be honest. My wife and I like a good zing. So now there's two last things we need to add before we turn up the heat and cook it down a little more. We need to add the cheese packet. Spread it out as much as possible in here. Just so it all gets mixed in, doesn't clump. And we'll come over here. As I always say, the cook gets a little sip of milk right from the thing. Add a few sprigs of milk. And we will now mix everything together. See, you don't waste a thing. I actually saw a uh, video during the pandemic here from one of the big places. They were showing you how to beef up craft dinner. And some of them were just going way too fancy for my liking. So now we'll turn this up a little bit. just because we want the rest of the cheddar to melt. And that tastes really good, guys. And the cake for dessert will be the icing on the cake. So. I just wanted to come up to temp a bit more. And that is the finished product. It tastes good. It's delicious. Um, I'm just going to heat it through a bit more, but that's a wrap guys. Thanks.